everyone, welcome back. So in today's video, I'm basically gonna be talking about all of the essential things that you might need for your dog. I did do a similar kind of video when we first got our dog, if you're new to my channel, by the way. First of all, hi, welcome. My partner James and I have got a dog called Pinky. She is nearly three, which I can't believe she's nearly three. I think she'll be three in sort of like April, May time. We're not 100% sure of her birthday because she is a rescue dog from Romania and she was found on the streets and they don't really know her backstory. And I did one of these kind of videos at the very beginning before we'd even got her of like everything that we bought for our puppy and some of this stuff ended up being really helpful some of it ended up not being that helpful and we didn't end up using it so I thought this would be a bit more of a experienced dog owner's guide to the things that you might need and then some optional extras so we'll start with the bare essentials obviously when you're getting a dog you're gonna need a bowl you're gonna need leads and harnesses you're gonna need food something that I'd actually really recommend if you've got a dog that wolfs their food down and they eat really quickly and then end up getting the hiccups or they just eat their food way too quick I definitely recommend getting one of these kind of bowls because when we first got pinky we had a regular sort of metal bowl so it has all these different shapes in it which the idea is that the food is then a little bit more difficult to for them to get out I mean she still eats her food in like 60 seconds but it does slow her down a little bit so I'd recommend getting one of these and then for her water bowl we literally just have like a standard shaped water bowl I've not gone and got it because it's full of water <laughs> and then for her food we are still using tails.com who I'm working with again on this video and it's basically a customizable dog food subscription service it is super easy you don't even have to go out to the store to get your dog food you do everything online it's really easy to manage so if you're the type of person that would maybe forget to buy your dog food it just shows up on your doorstep and it's got everything that you need to feed your dog which is obviously the most important thing probably when you get a dog you need to feed them so you go onto the website you can put in all the information about your dog like their weight their breed their gender their age if you want them to stay the same sort of weight if you want them to lose a little bit of weight if you want them to gain a little bit of weight you can put how active they are if they have any sort of allergies or food preferences or things that you would rather avoid you can just have the dry food or you can have a mixture of dry and wet food which is what we do and you can also put if they have any particular issues like if they have a sensitive stomach or anything and then they take all of that information and they put together your tailored dog food for you so this is her bag that has got her name on it which is very cute and it comes with a little card that tells you how much to feed them so pinky has two scoops of dry food on the setting z3 and you get this little scoop which is adjustable so she just has one of these scoops and then obviously put that in her bowl and then for each meal she has about a third of one of the tins and there's loads of different flavors some of these sound really delicious meaty feast with beef pasta and peppers farmer's pate with chicken and rice and harvest terrine with rabbit and carrots another thing as well you can tell them how many treats that you usually feed your dog throughout the day so if your dog has loads of treats it will kind of also adjust your food quantities for that and so it says on here 12 calories from treats and snacks which they do also have a huge range of some of Pinky's favorites are these cold pressed ones there's turkey there is salmon and there is lamb and it tells you how many calories on the back these ones in particular are really good for training if you're wanting to do training but not give your dog you know too many calories then these are just little tiny ones they also have these ones which are the new seriously meaty treats this is seriously meaty jerky and seriously meaty burger Oh, it's like a little mini burger. They also have the daily dental care chews as well. So they pretty much have everything you need in terms of treats for your dog, which you can just add on to your subscription if you want to. And they also now sell licky mats and toys. They did send over this really cute little toy. This one is a Beko cute and cuddly soft toy. It's a, it's called Michelle the monkey and it's made from recycled plastic. I specifically didn't give Pinky this before this video because um, most of her toys end up looking like this. <laughs> What's this? Okay, she's now just gonna sit on my lap, but you can have the monkey. Oh, she's sniffing her food that's just below my feet. I think she can smell all the treats. Lie down. Oh, good girl. There you go. So if you're a subscriber, they have the toys and the licky mats that you can add to your order. The licky mats are great, by the way, if you want to entertain your dog for a little while. And I do still have a discount code. So if you guys would like to try tails.com, you can have one month of free tailored dog kibble and also 75% off the rest of the range, which I believe just includes the treats. I don't think the toys and the licky mats are included in that. And I do have a customized link, which I will leave linked down below. It'll be in the top of the description box. If you guys would like to try it. And Pinky is a very food driven dog. She loves basically everything. <laughs> She's very driven by treats. And we find that treats really help her in terms of her training and stuff and I will talk a little bit more about training essentials in a minute. Another thing that is obviously one of the most important things is that you have a lead a collar and a name tag and some poo bags. I have all of that here in one. So we do just have this collar for her, which is by a brand called e -Paws. You might notice it has got a bell on it because Pinky is a rescue dog and she had quite a difficult time with her recall training. Our dog trainer at the time, because we did have some dog training sessions, suggested that we get a bell for her so that if she runs too far, we can hear 
where she is instead of just panicking, thinking, oh my god, where's she gone? We can't hear her. Whereas if you have a bell, it kind of gives you that peace of mind that, you know, you can hear them nearby and you can hear if they're getting closer to you or further away. You will need a name tag for your dog to put on their collar, which they have to wear whenever you're out on a walk, just in case they get lost. We just got one of these from Pets at Home and you just go in, you pick one and they do it for you there and then. I think it costs around £10 and they will tell you the exact information that you need to have on there um, by UK law. And then our collar and lead are from a brand called ePaws, which um, this does have a couple of knots in it, but it's not supposed to be like that. These are really good quality leads and collars. We really like this brand. Another brand that we found really reliable is a brand called Holty. And we've had harnesses and collars and leads from them. And they're also really good quality. You want to make sure that it's not one that's like a super cheap one that's going to come undone easily. Whereas, you know, this one is not going anywhere and also this lead is a lockable lead so you can slide up this little slidey thing and then it stops you from being able to um you know sort of accidentally unclip it and i've got to say from experience we've tried a whole load of different leads we've had the retractable ones but I've, i think that these ones generally they feel a lot safer because you can sort of wrap it round your wrist and hold on to it so you've sort of got the extra security of your wrist whereas with the retractable leads not only can sometimes they get stuck they can also sometimes go a little bit too far especially if you're walking next to a road you know you don't want the lead to extend accidentally and your dog to run into the road and also with those ones as well if your dog sort of suddenly pulls on you because i know that pinky sometimes chases stuff i find personally that you're much more likely to drop one of the big retractable leads because they just have a hook that your hand goes through and it's like a big plastic bulky thing and then if your dog then does escape from you and you accidentally let go of it they've then got this massive clunky like retractable lead bouncing along behind them which might then scare them and make them run further whereas if you just have one of these kind of leads i just find that they're a lot easier to grip another thing that's quite handy as well is just one of these little poo bag um holder things so that you can just pull one out when you need it and rip it off and then you can refill this and we just have these biodegradable poo bags which are also by the brand called Eco, which is the same brand as that toy. We also do have a harness for Pinky. We've tried multiple different harnesses. They do so many cute ones on the internet, or you can just get one of these um, sort of basic ones. This is by a brand called Dog Copenhagen. I would recommend going in and maybe getting one fitted. That's what we did with this one uh, when we were in the Lake District. We got her like this proper good quality sturdy one that's not going to come undone because it's got Velcro and buckles. When we first got Pinky, she didn't really pull. So she was using a harness. And then when she got a little bit older and realized that she was a little bit stronger, she was like, I'm going to start pulling on my lead. And so then we were having some training sessions to try and um, you know, help us reduce the pulling. And the, tr the dog trainer actually said to us, they think that she'd got quite strong from wearing her harness and pulling on her harness. She then got loads of like strength in her chest. And so she said, try swapping it to the collar for a little bit to see if she pulls as much, because maybe she won't pull as much if it's not like, you know, something strapped around her chest. And we found that that really helped, but obviously like, you know, do what works best for your dog. Um, harnesses are really good because it takes a lot of the strain out of their neck. But if you find that they get too strong with their harness in their chest, maybe swap between the two. But she's now a lot better at walking, but we do use the harness when we're going on like longer walks or we just want to have a little bit more security. Like when we're walking the lakes and stuff, we took this. And following on from that, these are the essential things that you might need for walks and also traveling in the car if that's something that you're going to be doing with your dog. If you are going to be traveling in the car, it is UK law that you have to have your dog secured by some sort of method. We got one of these dog seat belts online, which you basically clip this around your, one of the seat sort of headrests in your car. And then this bit attaches to their harness and then it's like slightly stretchy. And this just stops your dog, you know, from running all over the place in the car. And also if you are to have an accident, they are strapped in and aren't just going to go flying. So that is something that's super important. They're really affordable. We got a pack of two online. Another thing that I would strongly recommend recommend for the car is to get some kind of towel. This one is actually muddy because I went and got it out of James's car and he took Pinky out this morning. This is just a microfiber towel. I think it was one that was marketed sort of for pets. Oh yeah, it's, it's by a brand called Snuggle Safe and it is just a giant microfiber towel. These are really, really good for not only drying your dog if they get wet on a walk, but also for putting on your car seat. If your pet is going to be, you know, on your car seats, you can get specific covers for your car seats as well. But these kind of towels are really good. They dry really quickly and they're also really helpful for if your dog is having a bath or if you need to rinse them off after walk it's just always handy to have a towel um for any kind of weather situations especially in the uk um i'm sure you all know what it's like another thing as well which i forgot to mention the bare essentials but also we mostly just use this in the car or if we're traveling somewhere like long distance if we're taking pinky away for a weekend or like going on holiday or something a pet bed and i've got to say the reason i didn't mention this in the bare essentials is because we bought pinky multiple different pet beds when we first got her i think we got like three or four different pet beds we ended up with a few and i'm not gonna lie she did sleep in this for a little bit 
it. But most of the time now, she just wants to sleep on a blanket. And so what we do for her now, I know that not everybody's dog is allowed on the sofa. What we do for her now is we lay out a blanket and she goes and sleeps on that blanket. It's like her dog blanket. And she knows that when she goes into the blanket, when we get the blanket out, it is then time for bed. And she loves it. And she sleeps on the blanket more than she sleeps in the dog bed. And she doesn't really use the dog beds anymore. So um, that's why I didn't think to mention this straight away. But obviously some dogs do love sleeping in a bed. Pinky just likes sleeping on a dog blanket. So now we just take the dog blanket with us when we go to places and she likes to sleep on that. I guess it just depends what your dog likes. In the winter, it can get pretty cold. Like today, it is, on the day I'm filming this, it was like minus five this morning, like actually freezing cold. And something that I would suggest getting is a coat for your dog. We've got two of these from a brand called Muddy Paws. We have a red one and a brown one. The brown one's a little bit too big. The red one's a little bit too small. So she's kind of in between sizes. And so loads of people actually recommended that we get an Equa Fleece. So we are definitely gonna be ordering one of those. Apparently they're really great and they have waterproof ones as well. But these were the kind of dog coats that we went for. Um, again, just got them online and they are sort of fleece lined. And then this bit is supposedly waterproof. And then this bit just goes around the middle is Velcro. And then you can put her, um, the harness through this little hole. So I definitely recommend getting a dog coat if you're gonna be taking them out in the cold or in the rain. Another couple of things that you might not necessarily think of when you first get a dog, but come in so handy. A head torch, if you're going out walking in the dark. Oh, and also as well, her harness and her coats have got like reflective linings on them. So I definitely recommend getting something reflective if you're going out at night or in the dark. Oh, we also used to have this little flashing light that attached to her collar, but I think it broke and we haven't got a replacement. So some kind of reflective device or light that you can put on your dog. I mean, I guess the more things the better so that you are seen. But if you are out walking and especially when it gets dark so early at the moment, I would definitely recommend getting a head torch. So if you are walking and it suddenly gets dark, if you've got one with you, it's really, really handy. Obviously you could just use the torch from your phone but then you kind of need an extra hand to hold it and yes you look kind of weird walking around with a head torch but they come in so handy so I don't care and then also a collapsible dog bowl this is actually a tails.com one that we first got when we signed up I'm not sure if they're still running that offer but when we first signed up for them it came with a free collapsible dog bowl but you can get these kind of things in pretty much any pet shop so if you are out walking especially in the summer you need to bring some water with you and you can also get these bottles that have got like a pull out bit where you can pour the water into this little tray that is attached to the bottle we did have one of those but it broke and so we just have this bowl now and usually in the summer anyway we'd bring a bottle of water for ourselves in a backpack and then you can just pour some into a little bowl so moving on to more specifically training stuff something that i highly recommend if you are trying to train your dog with its recall and you don't want to lose your dog i would recommend getting one of these which is a long line lead this one is all tangled up because i'm not gonna lie we've not needed to use it in ages which is great but this was so helpful at the start and again it's just like a it's a really really long lead it does have a handle on one end but it's pretty lightweight as well and so what you you can do with this is obviously attach it to your dog and then let them run a bit further with it so they can still run about um I, I can't remember how many meters long this one is but it's pretty long so if you go out into a, like a more open area if you're able to put them on one of these let them have a run about and then you can call them back to you and train them that way whilst being on the end of one of these without the fear that they're gonna just run off and never come back she's got so much better with her recall i mean she's not perfect but she you know she she's so much better than she was before and then something that we did with a dog trainer but you can definitely sort of like research and google how to do this kind of training is we actually trained pinky to come back with an emergency whistle so instead of just this is just a dog whistle again you can get them in like packs for really cheap online instead of just blowing the whistle like crazy and then your dog ignoring it what we did train pinky to do i mean she's got a little bit worse with it now i'm not gonna lie we need to sort of like pick back up with the training our trainer taught us to blow the whistle in a specific sort of way or a specific pattern so we blow the whistle five times in like short bursts and then that's when pinky knows that she has to come back to us and the way that we did that was with sort of like high value treats we actually trained her with like sachets of cat food or you can get like this um dog pate stuff in a tube and stuff that's like a really high value treat you only use with the whistle so they know they know that when this is blown they're going to get an amazing treat and that is really important that they come back and we now take the whistle with us everywhere and it's really really helpful and then obviously over time you can stop with the super high value treats or you can get these kind of things which are like a clicker Again, they're really, really cheap. And we did try the clicker at the start, but she responded better to the whistle, so we just went with that. So those are really good for training, along with obviously like little training treats, which I spoke about in the food section. The next category is grooming, because there are quite a few things that you might end up needing for your dog that you might not necessarily think about at the start. Obviously a good dog shampoo is very important if your dog is running through mud and puddles and getting dirty. And like Pinky likes to do, she loves to roll in other animals' poo from time to time, which is uh, great. We've tried multiple different brands of dog shampoo. Um, we did have 
have this one which we got through which was an anti-shedding or de-shedding shampoo and conditioner. This is by a brand called Cooper and Grace. Uh, I think we got this one on Amazon and it's just supposed to help with dogs that shed because Pinky does shed a lot and then obviously we combine this with brushing her. Another brand that we really like is called For All Dog Kind. This was a soothing shampoo. There's this one which is the Digby Dog Wash with lavender and mandarin essential oils. This one is also really nice. It smells really good as well. And the D-Dog Shampoo Deodorizing Shampoo. To be honest, they're all pretty good. Every dog shampoo that we've tried has been pretty great. Um, they all seem kind of similar. They all tend to smell a little bit nice and they all get the job done. So I would recommend any of those really. And then something which is a bit of an extra, you don't need one of these, but I've actually found them coming really handy. These are like dog sort of freshening lotions, which I know sounds really extra and it sounds ridiculous. It's not like a perfume, but um, this one in particular, the one from For All Dog Kind, it is a daily freshener scent spray for smelly skin and coats. And we don't use this every day. We only use it every time to time. To be honest, we mostly use this when people are like coming around to the house and I want Pinky to smell nice. <laughs> some people hate the smell of dog and to be honest she's not a smelly dog because we give her frequent baths she doesn't smell but just if you want something that is a little bit of extra you know something to make your dog smell nice and also this one supposedly has natural oils in it that are supposed to naturally deter fleas and then this one is the d-dog hygiene lotion which is supposed to kill any bacteria that is on their coat a good quality brush this is the type of brush that is supposed to help with dogs that shed a lot and to get out some of their like undercoat i don't know what brand this brush is because it doesn't say on it but I'm pretty sure we just typed in like dog brush and it comes up with a whole load of different ones. We've tried lots of different ones. We've had like the standard sort of dog brushes. We've tried the ones that have got the little like fine teeth combs. Those ones are really good as well, but I couldn't find it for this video. I don't know where we've put it, but this one is probably the best one that we've tried because it's got, you know, good quality handle. It's quite wide so it can do a lot in one go and it gets off a lot of a first. If you have a dog that sheds, I would recommend getting one of these kind of brushes. And these are things that I know not everybody does, but just in case, the vet did recommend that we brush Pinky's teeth and I think most vets obviously recommend good dental hygiene with your dog because teeth are important. We don't brush our teeth every day. We brush our teeth from time to time. Just me being honest, um, but we got this little set from Pets at Home and it's just got two different sized toothbrushes and then it's got this horrible flavored liver flavored toothpaste. And then this is a dog claw clipper. I know that some people are terrified to do this. I am also now terrified to do this because there was one incident where I accidentally cut one of her claws a little bit too short but at the start I was cutting Pinky's claws all the time but you can also obviously take them to a groomer's and they'll do it for you or you can ask them to do it at the vet obviously speak to a vet about this because every dog is different and every person is different but we have a flea and tick and worming um, monthly tablet like treat thing that we give to Pinky and it covers sort of like everything but like de-fleeing and worming type things are obviously something that you need to consider for your dog as well as pet insurance I would highly recommend that you get pet insurance oh and speaking of ticks Get yourself some of these. These are tick removers and they will come in so handy if your dog gets a tick. I think Pinky's only had like two or three in her life, which is pretty good going so far, but these are so much easier to get ticks out than anything else. So the next category is toys and things to keep your dog entertained. Something that I would recommend to everyone with every kind of dog, these come in different sizes. This is a Kong. It looks interesting. And the idea with these is a very tough toy you can get them in different softnesses as well and it's got a hole in the middle and you can't get specific kong treats that go in this and then your dog has to try and work out how to get it out or you can just put regular treats in this which we do quite often or something that's really good is dog peanut butter this is you know peanut butter that's without all the sugar and salt that you'd have in regular peanut butter but just a little bit of peanut butter in a kong or on a lick mat i found really helps to keep the dog entertained you can also fill them with stuff and then put them in the freezer so in the summer it gives us something nice and cool to chew on so i'd really really recommend one of these and also dog peanut butter as well you can get it from most pet shops other types of toys that i found really helpful for pinky because anything soft i mean she loves soft toys but they will be destroyed in a matter of minutes even certain toys that we've bought that are supposedly indestructible like the really tough sturdy ones she will still rip them apart in a matter of minutes. Here's an example. Soft toys are great, but I would recommend if you do have a dog that likes to chew stuff a lot, uh, maybe go for some that are a little bit more sturdy, like these kind of bones. She's also had wooden bones. She's had the yak chew things, various different types of antlers, which keep her entertained for ages. And it just gives her something a little bit harder to chew on. Obviously every dog is completely different, but these work really well for her. The thing that has kept her the most entertained, I got this from Pets at Home when we first got Pinky. I think it was like in the first couple of weeks. This is a ball that you can fill with treats and out of all of the puzzle games right we tried these other puzzle games like some that had little cups that you could hide treats under she would just take the cup out and chew it and then those toys were destroyed but this 
It's a hard ball. You can twist this little thing, fill it with some treats, and then sort of close it back up a little bit. And then she will push this around the floor until the treats fall out of it. And it keeps her entertained for ages. This is probably her favorite toy. She's had it for the past couple of years. Something that I wouldn't necessarily recommend are these sort of like cheap, squidgy plastic toys. Uh, maybe some dogs do love these. And if you don't have a dog that rips stuff apart, then they might love these kind of sorry pinks they might love these kind of like squeaky uh just cheap basic toys but we got her a few of these at the very beginning but what i realized is that she then would chew them to pieces and then there would be loads of little bits of plastic and i was worried that she was going to eat them or choke on them and so then we took all of those toys away from her so anything that is like plastic like plastic that can be chewed and ripped into little pieces I wouldn't necessarily recommend and then you can also get this kind of thing which is called a snuffle mat and you can just hide certain treats in it but honestly Pinky finds the treats in about 60 seconds so it doesn't keep her entertained for that long but lots of people recommended these kind of snuffle mats to us and then the final category just a few little extra bits are like optional handy extras that we found really came in handy so something that comes in really handy it's not essential but it's pretty good this is a paw buddy and it's by the brand that makes boot buddies which are meant for cleaning like I don't know like muddy boots and football boots that's what James uses it for his football boots but this one is specifically made for dogs so what you do is you fill this up with water it's not got any in there at the moment and then you can untwist this and then you squeeze it and obviously actually there might be a little bit left in it but just having this in the car when you go for a walk fill it up with water before you go if they do roll on anything get any mud on them get really muddy paws and you just want to like give them a really quick like you just like squirt water at their paws and then just give them a little scrub then you can do that with this and it's really helpful so i just thought i'd give that a mention a couple of bits that come in really handy in the summer this was we're gonna have to get a new one it was a fish that you could fill with water and put in the freezer and then they can chew it and it cools them down in the summer and that came in so handy when we were having a heat wave but uh since then she has chewed it in half and then also we got one of these which does it have the brand on it? Oh, I think it does. Oh, I think it says Chili Paws on it. This looks really weird, right? It kind of looks like a giant piece of like, I don't know, napkin. This is actually a towel that when you, I know it doesn't look like it, but when you run this under the water, it expands and soaks up loads of water, stays cold for ages, and your dog can either lie on it or you can wrap it around your dog and it doesn't sort of like drip everywhere. It's this really weird material which looks really thin like this, but when you run it under the water, it kind of goes all squishy and soft and doesn't look like a piece of paper. But this again was so handy in summer to cool her down. And then lastly, a couple of handy extras to have if if your dog sheds, you're gonna need some kind of pet hair removal thing. Yes, you can vacuum as much as you want, but I can promise you, you will still get pet hairs everywhere. I'm sure you understand if you do have a dog that sheds. Um, we've tried quite a lot of these sort of pet hair removal devices, the removable ones, uh, removable? Reusable ones, but I just don't find that anything works as well as these sticky paper ones which is frustrating because i'd love to find something that's a bit more sustainable i think we just got these in ikea and got like a big set of refills but these are so good for getting pet hairs off of your clothes and then you just peel off the next layer these are so good we have so many of them kicking about the house um but yeah i've tried these reusable ones and they just don't work as well so if anybody has any recommendations of ones that actually work please let me know and then this is so random I, i'm gonna have to like figure out what this is called and i will try and leave a link down below this is really good for like sofas and carpets and any sort of like soft surfaces that you want to get like quite a few pet hairs off at the same time i'd recommend getting one of these things it's just like a wooden stick with like a metal attachment um maybe don't use it on anything that's going to snag super easily but we use it like on our carpets to get up extra pet hairs but sometimes the vacuum can't get all of them with that guys i think that is everything those are all of these sort of like dog essentials that i would recommend i mean not obviously you don't need every single one of these things but these are just the things that we use all the time and find really helpful and i think we have now covered everything what do you reckon pinks She's just having a snooze. And I think, guys, I'm going to wrap up that video here. Hopefully, this was helpful. If you have any recommendations of things, let us know down below in the comments because hopefully this video can be helpful to new dog owners and maybe old dog owners, people that have already got dogs that think, actually, that would come in really handy. Also, as well, if you would like to get the one-month free tailored dog kibble and 75% off the rest of the tails range, the link will just be down below in the description box and I will try and link everything else as well. I hope you guys are doing good and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Bye-bye.